Hi, I've been wanting to get this late 90s PC going for quite a while now. I also recently bought myself a 3D printer and I've got a part that I want to remix for this case. I've got myself a Celeron here with a three and a quarter inch floppy drive full of science from year eight, apparently. And a bit of extra blue tack. That, yeah, I'll get back to that. And I don't know, I've put, already put a few cards into it. But if you look around the side, one of the previous owners have put these little rubber feet on the side of it. I guess they thought, hey, let's make this a desktop case. So yeah, I got enthusiastic one day and put in desktop orientated five and a quarter inch drives and yeah, it doesn't work because well, that top bit doesn't come off, or well, at least not easily. I've not been able to figure out a way. Oh no, those are riveted in. Yeah, nah. So, going to reorientate that, and also maybe pull out some of those cards and do a bit of stuff, add a bit of thermal paste onto the CPU, because that's surely all dried up. Uh, check out what we got in here that we're gonna put back in, and some of the other bibs and bobs that I've bought to put into this computer. I've pulled out the cards in the machine and we have a 100 base T network card in here. We also have a GeForce, a GeForce 2, an MX400V it says on the label there. Bit overkill for DOS but yeah, should be fun for some of the Windows 98 games. And all 64 with, you know, all that wavetable synthesis for MIDI, as well as a MIDI slash game port connector. For mass storage, I wasn't going to use a spinny hard drive. I bought this little CF to IDE adapter, which I think I might actually use for another project. Instead, I'm going to use this SD card to IDE interface and I've already done a test 3D print of the front bracket that will go into the five and a quarter inch drive bay. And since the machine only has USB 1 and I saw this kicking about online, I bought this little USB 2 PCI card. First bit of fun is getting that motherboard off so I can look at it a bit closer and it has those annoying plastic pegs as well as what I expected to see in an ATX motherboard case, just regular screws. And if you've ever tried to pull off those plastic peg standoffs, oh man, you understand why they started dying out in the late 90s, if only sooner. Unfortunately, I couldn't think of a way to replace those little plastic standoffs, so I kept them and also replaced the missing metal standoffs. Now to check out the thermal paste on the CPU and it's in a slot one so what you do is you push the little tabs in and then you should be able to pull it up and uh, yeah with a little bit of effort later there you go it just pulls up just so easy yes. Now it is on a socket adapter so uh, yeah just sort of push down there and pull them out and Yep, you should be able to get the CPU off. It will be stuck down with sort of thermal sticky tape kind of stuff. So yeah, just sort of go and snap that one off. And then clean off the gunk, which was pretty well stuck on. I had to use a bit of isopropyl and a whole lot of scrubbing and scratching to go get that one off. Give the CPU a bit of a clean up as well, and then apply some fresh thermal paste to it. Reattach the heatsink and fan. I also found it was useful to clean out that slot one edge connector, which had accumulated a bit of dirt over the years. And then once it's all done, you can just slide it all back in and it definitely goes in easier than it came out. And then go and reattach the fan and everything should be running quite chill now. Next up is those drive bays, which I want in a tower orientation. So after wrestling this front bit off, fortunately not breaking any of those little plastic tabs, everything is 
all back in the correct orientation and I can access the drives from both sides now. I had a look in the power supply and everything looks like it's okay. So let's go and power this on and see if we get any beeps. There we go. All right. I suppose the next thing to do is put the motherboard back into the case, which was a bit of a struggle. And let's try it with a monitor. And there you go. Looking good. Yep, seems to be loading up all the things. I do need to adjust that monitor though, so it's got the correct adjustment there. Auto correct it. Yep, nice. Oh, and it does have a CMOS checksum error, which means we need to, not quite surprisingly at all, replace that battery with a nice fresh one, which fortunately these type of batteries don't leak all over the place. And then it's on to adding all the cards, starting with the sound card. And then the network card, a cool little new USB 2 card, and yep, screwing them all in nice and secure. And switching on the computer to see if it all still works with all the cards in it, which unfortunately the USB 2 card made it so that the computer was unresponsive and yet didn't display more than a black screen. I'm not too fussed because we do still have the SD to IDE, which will be able to be easily accessed on the front thanks to this little design that my brother modified off the internet to remove all the extra bits and put the SD card slot in the middle. Unfortunately, I only had this very pinkish looking beige, not the cooler beige that there was, but yeah, it's looking pretty good and everything is all nicely lined up. We have no worries about inserting the SD card. For the light holes, I printed out these little light tunnels using some PETG and just a few settings that the little design told me to do. And then once it's all in there, we place it on top of the three LEDs and tape it down with some capped on tape on both sides. And yep, so far it's looking like it is gonna be transmitting light through to the front. So we'll put it all into the case and power it up and see how it goes. Okay, there was a little bit of problems when I thought for a second that the power connector was going to hit the bottom of the five and a quarter inch floppy drive, but securing it down like that seemed to be fine. So yeah, powering it on, the lights are looking great in the front and I did use a little bit of blue tack to secure the alignment. And now we can go and install Windows 98 off CD, which, uh, yeah, then my first problem came in, which was essentially it just couldn't recognize the massive 8 gig petition that I'd created, just throwing heaps of errors. So I went and put the SD card into my Windows 10 computer, split it into two petitions, and yeah, there was a few weird messages that popped up in the scan disk but it all managed to scan through quite fine and we could get on to installing windows 98 and i went for the most typical common install yeah of course picking australia as my country and then of course you get all the little messages that entertain you or something I don't know, do they still do that in the latest installs? I don't think I've reinstalled Windows 10 anywhere near as much as I reinstalled Windows 95 and 98 and all those ones back then. I also reckon that nowadays drivers are so much more easier than they were back then. Oh man, like I had no idea what it was asking for. Yeah, I guess that was it. After a while, I just reckon the answer is just keep clicking OK. And eventually, you might just get yourself into Windows and find that there's even more drivers to go and, I don't know, whatever. Carry on. And any time now, we should have a, there it is, welcome to Windows 98. And yeah, kind of terrible default <laughs> graphics settings. 
But you can get the appropriate drivers if you go search around on the internet and dump it onto the SD card, which, uh, yeah, there they are. Classic NVIDIA graphics drivers. And uh, also, yeah, look at that. All the colors are now showing. And then, yeah, let's get the sound card set up. Beautiful and install some sample sounds so we can listen to some MIDI music. Mmm, beautiful FM, but you know, since this does have wavetable synthesis, let's go give that one a go. Yeah, they could never really get the guitars exactly right, but I do like those drums. Speaking of stuff not exactly right, we do have the network card driver now installed. And that was a bit of research into try and work out what the card actually was compared to what was written on the label. But for browsing the internet, it still wants to connect you through a modem that totally is not connected. So I went through and changed a few different internet settings and even removed some protocols and devices that weren't needed. And I think that did the trick because we can now access Google on Windows 98, believe it or not. Whereas the Windows update servers for Windows 98 have long gone. So if you want to actually update Windows 98 through the internet, you've got to make sure you've got at least Internet Explorer 5 and then go to windowsupdaterestored.com and that will give you all the updates and essentially act as if it was Windows Update. Enough of setting stuff up. Let's go play some DOS games, starting with Commander Keen, one of my favorites from childhood. Yeah, I kind of feel like I've got a little bit rusty. Also trying to work out exactly where the controls are and hit everything in the right spot. Oh, cool, my pogo stick, nice. Okay, yeah, I didn't last long, hey. All right, let's see how long I last in a slightly newer game. Duke Nukem 3D, let's go. Okay, that wasn't the best. Cool. Alright, aiming is automatic somewhat. That's cool. Jumping is with the A key and... Yeah, no mantling. Okay. And... Yeah, so if you're hidden there, you can get through that spot. If I can walk correctly. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I should have known that was too close. <laughs> All right, let's play a Windows game that will use the 3D accelerator, Half-Life. Hey, Mr. Freeman. I had a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my file. No, not down. It's not There's a lot more story in Half-Life before you run into trouble, so I might get back to that game later and get back to trying out stuff. I've gone and put a whole pile of isopropyl on the cleaning disc for the five and a quarter inch floppy drive, and I'm not totally sure if this is exactly the best way to go and get the drive to spin and engage the heads, but at least it has gone and made the floppy dry and also I did store the floppy drive pretty well all these years. So it should be okay to use and I want to use it on this little program which will be able to write floppy disks for a very different kind of PC. Since I don't yet have any disk images I'm going to do a more conventional write to this floppy disk which yep it's currently got nothing on it so we'll format it with system files. 
Yep, and it did it without any errors or anything. And yep, there's command sitting on there. We'll change it so that it will boot off the floppy drive. And there we go, starting Windows 98, which should be the DOS one. It is reading from the drive. And there we go, the A prompt. Let's check the directory. There you go, it all worked. It was fun playing around with PC technology from over 20 years ago. And yeah, finding all those improvements that we used to, but weren't around back then. Hey, I've got a few cool ideas for videos that are coming up and of course involving modern or retro gaming related type stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video and most of all, thanks for watching.